everyone, and welcome to Here for the Right Reasons, a Speakly's Bachelor podcast. I am your host, Sarah Heron, reporting live on a Friday with my microphone back. I apologize for any sound issues that upset anyone in the review section. I have my mic back. It's Friday, and we are here to break down the biggest headlines of the week in Bachelor Nation. As I mentioned last week, I will be here every Friday to cover the biggest news of the week, give you quick little breakdowns, run down of what you missed if you don't have time to keep track yourself, give you a little bit of commentary. And then on Tuesdays, we will have Bachelor Nation related interviews or maybe go down a few other shows. Thank you to everyone who sent me suggestions. I'm looking in to all of it and trying to figure out what is the most timely and easiest way to cover some different shows while we wait for The Bachelorette to return in July. But I also have some fun interviews from people who I think you're going to want to hear from in the Bachelor universe scheduled. So as long as there are no cancellations in the coming weeks, we should have some good Bachelor content as well. As far as this week, not a crazy week in Bachelor Nation. I feel like things post Clayton's finale have kind of calmed down. We know Susie and Rachel are full on in filming mode. Jesse Palmer and Mike Fleiss and Rob Mills have all been posting some behind the scenes photos. I think it's a fun way to keep us interested. They both look great and they both seem to be greeting men in a driveway. So still totally not clear. I've asked ABC um, for con- for confirmation or clarification on how the season's going to go. And they have declined to provide that information at this time on or off the record. So unclear what that means, but Filming is certainly underway and I can't wait. Um, some of the guys have also who were who were cast as the potentials have started to post on Instagram again. So we did get confirmation that they will all be there. I spoke a little bit about the cast with Susanna from Bachelor Data on Tuesday's episode. So if you're looking for average age, hometown, some other fun analytics about these dudes, go listen to that episode. But something else I wanted to touch on is kind of concluding this Tasha Caitlin. Jesse Palmer, Bachelorette host saga, because last week I broke down, you know, Us Weekly's reporting that Caitlin and Tasha were informed before after the final rose that Jesse Palmer was indeed going to be hosting season 19 of The Bachelorette. Then Caitlin had a podcast, her podcast, where she sort of implied, more than sort of, implied that it was a blind side and kind of said she found out on after the final rose. And just from everything I had heard, I was kind of taking that as the final confirmation, the nail in the coffin. But I saw this graphic going around Twitter with a quote, like Caitlin's face in a quote saying that she was blindsided. And I asked the person who reshared it where they found this quote. And they told me that they heard it. They didn't listen to the episode, but they heard it was on the podcast. So I don't know if they even made this graphic, but they had shared it and they hadn't even verified it. So I I feel like people put words in Caitlin's mouth. I definitely think she sort of implied it. And I love Caitlin. I'm not trying to shade Caitlin. That statement, I think, could be read in two different ways. I heard it as nail in the coffin, maybe because I knew that they weren't blindsided, but people were taking it as a blindside. I don't know. But now we have on record Tasha's point of view. I don't even want to say confirmation because I don't, I'm not trying to drag Caitlin. I'm really not. But Tasha said, at an Oscar party when one of the Us Weekly uh, LA reporters caught up with her, she said, quote, Caitlin and I both had a phone call weeks prior saying that they were going to move forward with Jesse. So it wasn't really a surprise. I'm very happy for him. I feel like he's been very sweet and kind to me. So I wish everybody that takes the position the very best. And I'm excited to see the new season. So kind of like what Us Weekly reported, there were talks, there were conversations. They didn't just say, okay, Jesse, go ahead and reveal it. Like they knew. Um, And from everything I believe they knew. But this was also an interesting quote because as I've spoken about Tasha, who, you know, left clickbait, obviously has been disassociating heavily from The Bachelor, mostly after the Zach split, but especially in the in the new year, in the last couple of months. And this reporter asked whether she was going to be watching the new season. And she said, you know, I never really watched the show before I was on it. Believe it or not, I was a very new viewer. And to be honest with you, I took a little bit of a step back and I've been so busy that I don't even have a TV in my place. So I haven't really watched too much, but I will, which is just an interesting quote because up until Clayton season, she was on more than one podcast, rotating clickbait and bachelor Harper era covering the show. She was hosting it. So I guess she just means Clayton season specifically shouldn't watch because obviously she was there for Caitlin and Michelle. That kind of makes it seem like she hasn't watched in years. She wasn't even the bachelor that long ago, but she really is trying to disassociate herself kind of, but 
I feel like it's, it's definitely a hard thing to do. And I don't know if there's many bachelor bachelorettes that have done it successfully where they can't go one interview without getting at least one question about it. That's kind of where I would maybe, maybe put it in that perspective because it's like, yeah, they've all, a lot of them have had success in recent years. And you can think back to like Travis Stork, who now hosts the doctors. We interviewed him a couple of years ago, me and my uh, former coworker, Emily Longaretta, and we asked him about The Bachelor, but I don't think he had been asked that in a long time. But I mean, like modern day influencer bachelor people, have any of them moved completely forward? A lot of people say Rachel Lindsay, which is true to some degree, but she still gets asked questions about The Bachelor and she always will. It it just, it is. So, so will Tasha. Um, should be interesting to see what she does next. When asked about her dating life, she said, quote, it's pretty non-existent for me right now. I have no desire to date maybe in a year from now. I feel like my main focus is myself, my career, my mental health, my happiness, my family, my friends, and I'm just becoming my own person. And I'm really happy about that. Good for Tasha. Not totally surprising. Um, I feel like a lot of times when the bachelor, bachelorette engagements end, they either jump into something right away, Katie and John, which we're about to talk to, or they don't date someone at least publicly for a long time because they're a little scarred from the experience. So I don't think Zach and Tasha are ever getting back together. I know there was a lot of hope and speculation about that for a while, but I don't think there was ever much truth to that. If I'm being honest from anything I've heard. Speaking of moving on quite quickly, Katie Thurston and John Hersey did their first joint interview on Caitlin Bristow's Off the Vine podcast. Caitlin Bristow, God bless her. She really does bring the content, whether it's her or her interviews. And I do love her. So I don't want people to think I was shading her earlier, but just saying it wasn't a blind side. So Katie and John did a joint interview on Off the Vine and they were asked about how Blake reacted to them getting together, which if you don't remember, Blake was on, I believe it was talking it out the one with uh, Brian Abasolo and Mike Johnson to give his initial reaction. And he was clearly blindsided. It was right after the 12 days of messy with begin again, wild choice, which we'll get into again. I'm still not over that whole thing. Thank you, Katie, but also WTF Katie. Katie said it was kind of disappointing because Blake and I, and I think he's gone on to say this another podcast now, we both knew our relationship was not working out. My relationship with Blake was very separate from my relationship. John, John then said, This was the podcast that he kind of implied there was emotional cheating, which I don't blame Blake for at all, because I would be very confused if less than a month later, the person I was engaged to was now dating um, their best friend, quote unquote. So I don't fault Blake, but John said, I watched how much effort, meaning Katie, she put into that relationship while it was falling apart. And what really pissed me off about that, listening to that podcast, was it got to the point where he started to paint a narrative where a narrative started to get painted that she was putting no effort in and Blake was the only one putting an effort towards the end. And furthermore, and in that time, she was somehow absent that she was somehow emotionally cheating with me. And it just really pissed me off. I met Blake and we hung out for a solid, what, 12 or 18 hours. Hashtag never forget the plane and the video of the plane. And I did not have a negative opinion of Blake at all. Like we had fun together. We did an escape room. We hung out all day. That's when, why that happened. I was so disappointed at first. And then I realized like, this is not, this is him capitalizing big word on this opportunity, which I understand. I get how it works. Like seeing the world now for the past almost a year, just when it was at the expense of my friend, it was frustrating. So John accuses Blake of capitalizing on Katie moving on quickly and of this, of their split, but he doesn't fault him for it. Cause that's what happens in bachelor nation. And I thought that that was a fair point. I mean, it's not like Blake needed to go on talking it out a day later or two days later or whatever it was a week later and break his silence, tell his story. But I don't fault Blake for it at all. There's narratives being painted. It's so confusing. Narratives are going to be painted, whether you're part of the narrative or not. And there's a way to go about it. And Blake didn't say anything that scandalous or that rude or that shady. He could have a hundred percent been harsher because of how this all played out. And quite frankly, John and Katie, if they chose to go down that road could have been, you know, harsh too. And no one really did. So everyone kind of handled this with maturity with the exception, of course, of the 12 days of messy, which if you were living under a rock in November, December, Katie Thurston assigned a Taylor Swift song to all of her exes, kicking it off with Blake's. We are never, ever getting back together. And on off the vine, she noted, I texted him meaning Blake. And he's, he was like, ha ha. Yeah. I know what you're like. And everything was fine. Katie then did Thomas Jacobs, I knew you were trouble, which this was after Thomas's like redemption story on paradise. And she said to Caitlin Bristow, it was a lot messier than I honestly anticipated. And I will say with Thomas's song, it did not go the way I expected. It upset Thomas. It upset Becca. I did reach out to both of them. The minute I realized it was upsetting them and I understood where they were coming from and I heard them out. If you remember Becca Kufrin infamously unfollowed, um, 
Katie Thurston during this time. She also said that the couple's response prompted her to cut out her song for Greg. So during 12 Days of Messy, everyone was waiting for the Greg song. They didn't know we were going to get a John Hersey begin again relationship. Everyone thought the end was going to be, you know, Greg all too well. And Katie said that the way Thomas and Becca reacted made her do more positive songs for the remainder of the challenge, which is why Greg just didn't get a song. She said, everyone knows probably what Greg's song hypothetically would have been. And she didn't confirm, but like everyone knew it was going to be all too well. She also said it caused her to quote, remove any negativity going forward. Blake did do an Instagram Q and a a day after this interview dropped. Someone asked him what he thought about the capitalization quote that John gave. And he simply said he did not want to ignite the drama again and said, quote, they're allowed to have their opinions and share their side of things. It's all good. So taking the high road there, shut up like points. Quick other headlines. Andy Dorfman is engaged. Blaine Hart is her fiance. In case you didn't know, they met 15 years ago through a mutual friend. Nothing happened. Life took them in crazy directions. Obviously, Andy was our season 10 bachelorette after Juan Pablo's season. Engaged to Josh Murray, I think in real time for eight, 10-ish months. Broke up five months after the finale. Wrote her books, accused him of some not so great things. And has since been dating for sure, but kept it pretty under wraps. Never really went public anyone again, with anyone again. Over the summer, her and Blaine had reconnected. Um, they were both in Italy at the same time. Went to get drinks after seeing, I think they were both there. Um, I don't know if it was on an app or on Instagram. I can't remember, but been together ever since the summer. He's from North Carolina. She lives in LA. They were doing long distance through the fall. He proposed in early March or late February on the beach. The ring is insanely large. So less than a year together. But when you know, you know, I guess. And after everything Andy has been through, um, she's 35 now. She, or maybe 33. um, And she, they are just really, really cute. The videos she's posted on her Instagram story. They were on the beach. I think they do sunset cocktails all the time. It looked super casual. She was in like sweatpants, but she's freaking gorgeous. Doesn't matter. He surprised everyone with her friends and family afterwards. And it's just really cute. And I'm really happy for her. And I've always wanted to interview Andy. So hopefully one day. And I think that's all I got you guys. Oh, Connor, the cat will not be on Rachel and Gabby season. Contrary to reality Steve's reports, he denied that. And then he was actually saying some really sad tweets about how everyone was like rejoicing that he wasn't going to be on it. Cause he's so sad and cringy. And that, you know, I agree with him being cringy, but why do you got to tweet it at him, dude? You know, the ukulele will tell him that enough. He doesn't need you to tweet it at him. Anyway, that's all you have for me. I hope everyone has an amazing weekend and comes back on Tuesday for a special interview with a former bachelorette. She's been on this show before. I think she's on here favorites. I don't want to say her name in case they cancel, Um, but that will be Tuesday. And then I'll be back next Friday with more Bachelor news. Bye.